This is what I've been waiting for. I am super excited. Let's go out to the ATL Atlanta, Georgia. Tracy Walker, bring it. All right. Well, thank you, sir. It is definitely an honor and a privilege, as always. Um, thank you, Dr. Goodkin. And well, Lisa, she stepped away. But thank you, Lisa. I know you can probably hear me in the house somewhere. Um, Tim as well. And, um, you know, Trisha, it's always a pleasure to be on the panel with you uh, because I, I feed off of things that you say sometimes. And I don't know if you do that with other leaders as well. You might hear something and, and it, you know, it expands and you have a download where you can share something of value. So I do receive a lot from you in that process perspective uh nada you're, you're absolutely fantastic and the t-shirt i need one i need one just like that okay um <laughs> so ben is right today I, I reached out because i usually get like trisha says i usually get the emails right curry talked about it where once you're on the panel they they will send them to you and if you don't receive it it's almost like oh well Maybe they don't want me on, right? And so that happened. And I said, you know what? I remembered something. I said, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you ask for, right? And I had to think about that. And I, it was a moment of um, leadership, right? And the idea of being humble versus being bold, okay? Mm -hmm. I think that you can do both very respectfully, okay? And so in my humbleness, I was like, well, maybe they don't want me. Oh, it's not a big deal. You know, you know, and you start to convince yourself that your worthiness isn't, um, it doesn't deserve to be, the light doesn't deserve to be shown on others. And today I said, well, you know what? I'm just going to reach out to Ben and doggone it. The worst thing that man can say is oh. no lady, we do not want you on this call. That's the worst he could say. Right. So I said, Hey, listen, right. And I sent him a message and he said, absolutely. And so the first point that I want to make is that you have to go for the things that you want. It may seem small. It's not that I want the call, right? That's not what it is. It's about, listen, we're moving into a space with this company where leadership is everything. Culture is everything. We all have an opportunity as leaders being in other companies and value that we bring and our expertise along our journey to make live good the absolute best thing smoking ever and i feel that if you have the ability to lead that the only way uh lisa or that dr goodkin or that ben or that nodder knows that is you have to demonstrate it by your production but you yeah. also have to open your mouth <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and let people know that, hey, I want to be a part of the legacy that we're building here. So that was the first thing with that. Um, the second thing is, uh, I am an avid, uh, I've talked about this before, but the science of getting rich, this is a little mindset, right? My pen just drops. Um, the science of getting rich. And I'm just going to really recommend that everybody go out and get this book. Okay, you can do it on free download. I think they have on some places. I like the physical book because this is like a reference book for me. I literally have every single thing highlighted. Uh, I go to it over and over. It is not a book that I've read. It is a book that I read on a consistent basis. And sometimes when there are things that get caught in my psyche that kind of can trick me up, trip me up, I come to this book, right? Some people might go to a spiritual source, but I'm talking about from business, right? In business. And so sometimes in business, I have to go to a reference point that reminds me of things that I know, but it's called a recollection on purpose because you collected the idea, but you now need to recollect the idea, right? Or remember, you already know, but you need to have it remembered, right? And so there's three things. There's, there's a chapter in the book here that is it's called some cautions. It's actually chapter 16. It's called, it says some cautions and concluding observations. It's assuming that you've read all of the other material. And now he's summarizing. This is by Wallace D. Waddles. He's summarizing the, the, the main points, right? If he had to give you the gist, right? And there are three things that I, I want to highlight. Number one, he says, never for an instant be betrayed into regarding that supply is limited. So what that means is, as network marketers, I hear it so many times in my team, I know the other leaders might hear it, where people are like, hey, nobody wants to join, right? Nobody is listening. Nobody's in my, I live in this town and nobody in my town wants to sign up, right? I live in Atlanta and I'm sure I could tell you, hey, nobody in Atlanta wants to join, all right? And I'm telling you that you cannot be tricked into thinking that supply is limited. 
there is an abundance and you hear Nauta speak it from a statistical standpoint all the time, right? All of these millions of people that exist on the planet. And for some reason, it is your limitation that you create. We don't even create abundance. Abundance is there. What we create are the limitations. Yes. And so the ability for you to not get tricked into the betrayal that supply is limited is an important aspect. And then he says, even if you find yourself doing that, he says, you must correct yourself instantly. I call that pivoting. A lot of people call that pivoting. So the idea that you're never going to think these things is a fallacy. You are, you're human. Your brain is going to pull that stuff in, but your ability to pivot, catch yourself. In other words, uh oh, I'm thinking something I shouldn't be thinking. Let me shift the ability to do that quickly and point yourself in the right direction. Like if you're in your car and you know, you're supposed to be headed south to Florida from Atlanta. And I realize I'm going north for me to ignore the fact that I'm going north because I've been going north. It's ridiculous. It makes more sense to turn around as quickly as possible at the very next exit and start going south so that I can at least have the ability to achieve my destination. Second thing, he says, give no anxious thought to possible disasters, obstacles, panics, or unfavorable combinations of circumstances. And I'm guilty of that. We probably all are guilty of that, right? But, you know, you have to be able to train your mind to focus on what you want and not on what you don't want. So what if everybody in your team quits? What if the leader goes to a different company? What if somebody says something bad about live good? What if you cannot give anxious thought to these things? Because a lot of times in our business, you start thinking about that stuff and you create self sabotage sabotage. And that means you don't even talk to anybody because of your fear of what the person possibly could say, but they didn't even say it. It's you're saying it for them. And it's because Ooh. of your anxious, your anxious um, thought to disasters and panics and unfavorable com uh, combinations of circumstances. Most times it doesn't even happen. And here's what you should know by now, if you haven't figured it out yet. Ben is some kind of way, Ben is going to find out about what and who is saying whatever. And if he finds it necessary to address it, your job is to capture the address and then share the address. It is not your job to address it. It's your mm -hmm. job to share the address from the authority who you, you can't get any better than a CEO. So my perspective is this. If you've got something negative to say, and if I send you another Ben video, right, the, the, the Ben shut it down video, and you still have something to say, then there, you're not joining. And I'm okay with that because I can't, there's, if you can't be convinced by the man who's kind of running the show of this whole thing, then there's nothing I'm going to be able to say to make you do it. So don't give thought to those anxious disasters and, you know, those types of thoughts. Third thing, guard your speech. Guard mm -hmm. your speech. I tell my son this all the time, and I know everyone on here has children. Guard your speech. I tell my son, oh. think before you speak. And something I've noticed in just all of these calls, the Thursday calls, the Friday calls, even when I watch other leaders just on their social media and things like this, I'm, a, I'm an avid listener and I watch people. And, I, and if you listen to every single speaker here, they are very careful with what they say. Even to the point that I heard Ben say in the, in the video that he did last Friday addressing all the drama, he goes, listen, sometimes you have people that may be criticizing what may or may not be right. Yes. Now, when many people say, such, say phrases like that, they may say things like, listen, if somebody is trying to address you about what may or may not be wrong, don't listen to them. But Ben didn't say that. Ben said, when people are, when you're trying to address people where you may or may not be doing something right, see, the direction of the speech puts your mind in the direction that he wants you to go. He didn't talk about wrongness. He talked about rightness. And I, I need everybody to understand that as you're speaking life over your business, as you're speaking success and financial remuneration, as you are speaking um, you know, abundance over uh, just you know, your quality of life and things that you want, you have to guard your speech and speak in the direction that, that you want. And so to summarize this whole thing up, um, your faith, your purpose, all right. And what you do, those things right there are all that matters. Treasure talked a little bit about your dream and where you need to go. Curry talked a lot about, listen, just do, do what's in your control. OK. And, and what I'm saying to kind of wrap all of that into to what I'm sharing with you is that you 
things might seem like they're failing, but you have to be able to see through. They say walk by faith, not by sight. So what does that really mean? It means that even though the physical world and the numbers of your the people in your team, which drives me batty when it goes down. I hate it, Ben and Ryan and Lisa. I know you encourage. I know I know you guys see it, right? I hate it. But I have to look through that. And if my numbers drop sometimes because you're trying to cross a threshold and then you wake up and it's changed, I'm <laughs> telling you, you have to see through that and Amen. know that the numbers that you desire are coming based on what you speak and based on what you think. And so it's super duper duper important that you wrap your mind around the science of getting rich, okay? You can put your spiritual stuff on it as well, but you have to know there's a science to it and you have to abide by the principles in order to get the results of the seeds that you sow. So with that, thank you, Ben, for allowing me to jump on today. And I hope I did you proud, sir. Oh, dude, I loved every second of that. That was pure fire.